Greetings, everyone. Father Jimmy, I hope you're doing well on this Saturday. It is the third day of August. Today, there is no feast day. There's no memorials. There's not even an optional memorial. It's a just a weekday. But the Roman martyrology does commemorate the martyrs of the Spanish Civil War today, who were clergy. They were religious. They were lay persons. They were all executed during the Spanish Civil War in a period known as the Red Terror. It is estimated that in the course of the Red Terror, 6,832 members of the Catholic clergy were killed. Also historically, this was the day that the finding of the body of St. Stephen, the first martyr, is commemorated. His body was discovered in 415, just outside Jerusalem. It was translated or moved to Constantinople in 439 AD by the Empress Eudoxia. But part of the remains were taken to Rome to the Church of St. Lawrence outside the walls, where they lie beside those of the great Roman deacon. Just a little note today. So going back to our readings today, I'm just going to read from the Gospel, Matthew chapter 14, beginning with verse 1. Herod the Tetrarch heard of the reputation of Jesus and said to his servants, This man is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work in him. Now Herod had John arrested, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Although he wanted to kill him, he feared the people, for they regarded him as a prophet. But at a birthday celebration for Herod, the daughter of Herodias performed a dance before the guests, and it delighted Herod so much that he swore to give her whatever she might ask for. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests who were present, he ordered that it be given, and he had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl who took it to her mother. His disciples came and took away the corpse and buried him, and they went and told Jesus. So Herodias' daughter does not often receive much attention in the story of the beheading of John the Baptist. Her name is not even given here in the scriptures. Yet here is a girl asking for the severed head of a holy man. Certainly the girl does not deserve full blame for such a monstrous thing, as it was her mother who told her to ask. But children place such great trust and confidence in the adults in their lives that they often imitate both their goodness and their evil without realizing it. In this way, Herodias' daughter could ask for something so cruel after years of influence from her powerful parents, after years of hearing their bitter judgments and witnessing the atrocities caused by their commands. Parents, teachers, guardians, must be discerning about the influences the children entrusted to their care on their children. They must be aware not only of their own influences, but also of the countless other influences that shape children's lives. We know that Jesus elsewhere in Matthew's Gospel gives us some rather challenging words. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for them to have a great millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Wow, those are strong words. Certainly for we who have influence over those who are younger and who are responsible for. So that's why we have to be so careful. Well, we got to keep praying for help in that, discerning always the will of God. So as we enter upon this weekend, let's continue to enjoy that restful time, hopefully family time, where we do give that good influence to children and family members. Pray, and also make sure you get to church this weekend as well. Hope you're doing well on this weekend. Let's keep praying for one another. God bless you and take care.